Hello makers and welcome to the studio. Now, if this is your first time here, welcome. Good to have you here. If you see anything along the way that you like, please don't forget to hit that like button. It really helps us out. And also, if you uh, like what you're seeing and want to see more of this type of content, then please hit that subscribe button. We drop a video every single week helping you to unleash your inner artist. Now, this week, we're going to be doing something somewhat different from a lot of the projects we've worked on so far on this channel. And that is we're going to be creating something using a paper approach, but it's kind of different. Let me explain what I'm talking about. It's this. Now, this often sits on the wall behind me, and some of you have commented over it. What is that thing? Uh, and, and what it is, it's basically a series of, uh, of rolled up pieces of paper that have been stuck in a frame. But not just that, not just that. Now, by the way, I refer to this kind of internally in my own head as kind of a Milli Fiori uh, approach. Milli Fiori is originally a glass making term for making glass beads, and Milli Fiori quite literally translates, translates to thousands of flowers. So we're kind of doing that. You notice all the blend of colors that work together? Yeah, that's our objective today. Now, the reason I need to show this to you somewhat before we jump in is because I want to show you how it's made so we can, in essence, deconstruct it. So to begin with, uh, here's one of my beads, for lack of a better term. And if I were to come in here, I'm going to take this apart. You can see this right here. And what I'm doing is I'm unrolling this thing. You'll notice that it's a, it's a layer of tissue paper here. We have some blue tissue paper. And as I come a little closer, I'm going to jump into some yellow tissue paper. And then as I unroll that further, 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 I'm going to come to the core. And that core is a piece of polymer clay. And we use this to wrap our tissue paper around. And it's really that simple. So I'm going to show you how we're first of all going to roll out polymer clay. And then, of course, with polymer clay, we're going to need to bake it to get it to uh, its hardness so we can work with it. And then I'm going to show you how we can create these individual beads. All right, so that is on store for today. So let's put the artwork away. And uh, let's talk a little bit about what our approach is going to be today. Now, to begin with, um, as in my example here, I want to be able to have something that I can actually put my paper beads into. And, uh, you know, <laughs> I, uh, I can run down to my workshop, I can grab a two by four, I can make all sorts of amazing things. And by the way, here's an example of uh, one of these I made a couple of years ago using a bent frame that I created. So you can do some very interesting approaches if you want. And I've also gone online in the past and looked for little trays, almost like condiment trays made out of bamboo and things like that, that will allow you to create a fairly interesting framework. Again, you may not have a frame just lying around that I get that this is kind of a unique shadow boxy kind of thing. But I'm going to show you also an alternative that uh, is really affordable. And that is this guy. So I went to my local family dollar, my dollar store. And uh, yeah, so uh, for a dollar and a quarter, I think is what I paid for this. Um, I created a, a bit of a box. Now it comes with this delightful rainbow, which I won't be needing. Uh, but you know, that may come in handy for a future project. But what I'm looking at here is thinking that this box would be really perfect for the project that I want to work on today. It allows us to fit what we need to do within the scope of an hour and uh, allows us to get that splash of color that we might want. Now, the first thing I'm going to do with this box is I'm going to paint it up. And I'm going to go with a flat, basic black for this. Let me just get a piece of newspaper out here so I don't get paint all over everything on my... Uh, my cutting board, because invariably I do, and invariably I have to take the cutting board away for a while and uh, and scrub it really hard in the sink. Uh, the paint comes off, surprisingly, but it takes a fair amount of elbow grease to get there. Now, in this case, I'm just going to go in here and I'm going to paint this up uh, using a flat, basic black. So here we go. And uh, I'm not going to worry too much about the inside, because we're not really going to see that, but I'm just going to come in here and let's just get the, uh, the edges, anything up at the top. That's where the... Uh, that's where it's going to be visible. And so we'll get that done real fast. Not a hard paint job at all. And I'm also going to do the bottom. I'm going to do the bottom because uh, I might want to put my signature on the back here. And uh, I don't know, it's just going to look more complete. If everything that anybody could see when they look at this finished project, I'm going to see nice basic black. All right. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. Now, again, I might want to touch this up, um, determine where it's touching the newspaper, and if anything's a problem. Let me give that a couple moments to dry. Okay, so what do we do now? We have a box that we want to put things in. The next thing I want to focus on is let's make the core 
that we're going to use for our beads. I went out and I said, let's see if I can find a, a fairly cheap set. Now, I found this one. It's actually impressive. It's uh, 72 different colors. It was not expensive at all. And I'll be honest with you. There are some brand name polymer clays that are pretty good quality. And if you're big, making little sculptures and things like that, I would, I would go with that for sure. Some of the off-brand stuff that you might get, it doesn't have necessarily the same level of quality. That said, for what we're doing, you don't really need much more than the color. We're really going in here for the color. So being able to come in and say, all right, I want to be able to take um, a, a blue color or this rather bright pink color or some sort of an orange color. I'm going to work with my, uh, my orange block first, let's say. And what I have found in doing this in the past is that about half this block is good for each one of the strands or cores that I want to make. So I'm just going to grab my rotary cutter tool and just uh, get this thing cut down the middle. Just open that up. There we go. Now, when we're working with polymer clay, one of the things to keep in mind is that sometimes, especially during colder weather, uh, you got to work a little bit. You got to get a little heat into it for it to be able to uh, become somewhat pliable. So I'm going to give it some body heat here and kind of squeeze it down and uh, just make sure I mix it up a little bit so that it's 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 free flowing more than uh, it is quite in the in the brick form. Okay, but something a little bit more like a soft putty that I can work with. And what I'm doing here is really easy. So <laughs> you may not consider yourself a sculptor and you don't really need to be one, thankfully. What we're gonna do instead is I'm simply gonna roll this out. Like when we were kids playing with, you know, modeling clay, I'm gonna do one of these. I'm gonna make a log and I'm gonna progressively get it longer and longer and longer by stretching it out like this, right? And try to get rid of the lumpy parts. What I'm trying to do is get this down and so that it's a snake or a worm or whatever you want to call it, that's about uh, maybe a less than a quarter of an inch, I think. And one of the ways I'm going to actually measure this, to be totally honest with you, let me just move this stuff out of the way for a hot second, is I am going to use my baking sheet as, uh, as my measuring tool. Why? Well, because I have to bake my polymer clay. And so if I'm putting this in here, I can get a deeper sense of, how well this will fit. Um, so actually, maybe even less. Maybe I can break this into thirds. Let's just find out. Um, what I want to be able to do is just, again, get these fairly thin. Not crazy thin. Like I said, I'm, I'm looking for about, uh, about a quarter inch. About a quarter inch. Maybe a little tiny bit less than a quarter inch. But when I come in here and I drop it on the baking sheet, I want it to be able to, uh, you know, fit. That's really the objective here. So this is your standard... 12 inch baking sheet coming in here. We're gonna need this, of course, because we're gonna need to drop this in the oven. Oh, by the way, uh, if you are working along with me, this is right about the time when you wanna set your oven to 275 degrees, preheat it. And when we're done making our, uh, our cores here, we're gonna have to bake them for about 15 minutes, depending on the thickness of what we're doing. In this case, since we are working with something that's about a quarter inch, it's about 15 minutes. It's usually 15 minutes per quarter inch of polymer clay. All right, just something to keep in mind. Again, this is uh, this is one of those you know truly multimedia experiences, right? We're we're doing a lot of mixed media in the sense that it's going to allow us to come in here and uh, work with some sculpting and work with some tissue paper and work with paint and you know, hey, we get to we get to deal with a lot of different things, kind of fun. But what I want to be able to do is to be able to drop this in the oven for 15 minutes, give it a few minutes to cool down on the other side of that, and then when we get back, we're going to have our center core to be able to work with, I'm going to show you how we can now start to put tissue paper around that and make things worthwhile. Two weeks later. Okay, welcome back. Now our polymer clay has had a chance to go through baking. And by the way, I'm using some other, uh, some older versions that I created just so I have some extras and didn't have to roll out a lot since I already have some here. So we're going to be working with these. But what I want to show you is the process we use to wrap the tissue paper around our polymer core. And uh, as you can see, I have some tissue paper here. <laughs> if you've worked with me on previous projects, you know that my tissue paper pile is one of those things that uh, I try to keep organized. And uh, it's a hard thing to do once you, uh, once you break it out of the package. But what I'd like to do in this scenario is find some colors that might work well together. And I'm going to start by grabbing a core color. I'm, I'm going to use this white here. It's a good neutral color to work with. And I'm thinking what might really be fun here is to use a pink color and uh, this blue color would also go really well 
with the pink color. Very contrasting. And again, I'm going to have to kind of sort out my uh, <laughs> my tissue papers. What I've found, discovered in the past, is that what I want to be able to do is find my tissue paper, you know, a standard sheet like this, and I want to fold it in half. Let me just get this organized a little bit. Fold this in half, and I'm going to cut it down the middle on this seam here. I'm going to do the same thing with my pink sheet. Uh, cut it down the middle here. And again, I'm going to just use my rotary cutter because that that is my tool of choice, if I can find it here. And uh, <laughs> nothing working with tissue paper to totally take over your workspace. But let's. Uh, I'm just going to follow the seam here. It makes it easy for me to find where that is. So I'm going to have uh, some pink here. Let's do the same thing with this blue. Let's cut this in half. And again, just kind of follow the seam. And it's approximate, doesn't have to be precise once again, all right? What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to create almost a palette of colors that I can work with here. Let me do a, a few more of these. I've got some yellows. This one's been used, but this one here. And cut this yellow down the middle. Beautiful. So we'll add some... Uh, some yellow to our mix. What do we have in here? We have uh, some more pink, but uh, that orange is nice. So let me grab this orange, and again, approximately down the middle. Pow, and pow. And I, you know, if you've worked with me, you know that I really like a good polychromatic mix where you have about 70% of the colors of the rainbow. Now the next thing we're gonna need for this project is a good old fashioned glue stick. And uh, yeah, I have, a, I, have, I have a couple of these. This is the Amazon Basics glue stick. It, uh, it's actually one of the one that has the purple uh, in the glue. And when the glue dries, that purple disappears. So just really helpful for helping you when you're working on projects to know, did I get some glue there or not? Did I get enough glue there or not? All right, so we'll work with that. But what I wanna be able to do is I'm gonna take my core. In this case, I'm using that white core. And I'm thinking, all right, how do I want to wrap this? What are the colors? And let's just uh, go back into kind of where we started. And I've got my pink and my blue colors. We'll say, all right, so we're going to have pink and we're going to have blue. All right, so, and this pink looks like I have two of them. There we go. All right. So a couple things I'm going to do. I'm going to actually double up on each one of my tissue papers here because we're gonna just roll them together anyway. And this will make things a little bit easier. Let's put blue next to the white and then the pink will be on the outside. So when we kind of stack things up, it's gonna kind of run like that. Does that make sense? And let me show you what this looks like. I'm gonna come here, I'm gonna just put the core next to myself just make it easier for me to reach for the glue. I'm gonna grab my glue stick here and I'm gonna run a bead of glue just down the edge here where my fold is on the tissue paper. That's going to be my starting point. I'm going to put my polymer clay core right in there and I'm going to just do a roll like this. Okay. And I'm basically just rolling it up like that and just try to keep it as even as you can. And by the way, if sometimes they come out a little bit sloppy or a little bit loose, that adds additional texture to the finished project. So you're going to have some interesting variety. So don't, don't worry about it. It's okay if it doesn't come out perfectly every time. Now I'm also going to work on aligning my next piece of tissue paper up. And at the top of my blue, let's come in here and let's add some more glue. And this glue is going to be used to get our tissue papers glued together. I'm just going to kind of just kind of create a seam like that. All right. And then I'm going to keep rolling. And now I'm rolling up here. And the pink is becoming the color on the outside. And as I come up to the very top, I want to seal this thing off almost like uh, like making a cigar. We're going to come up here, we're going to glue this off here at the top, and I might need to come back with my glue stick and just run a bead of glue down here just to pick up that outer loose layer, okay? Let's we'll see if that will work for us. All right, there we go. So that that is our objective. Again, let me just, uh, just listen. Glue the, the loose things down. It's not going to matter too much, but we want to make sure we have something that kind of looks like this. So if you look at it on the, on the end on, we can see our polymer Core, we have some blue around it, we have some pink around the blue. And I'm gonna to continue to make these because what I wanna do next is I wanna come in here and I wanna basically chop these into the right length. And we'll talk about what that is. So let's go make another one while, we, uh, while we're here. 
Uh, I'll use this green color as my core. And uh, I think this peach will contrast nicely with it. So let's get a sheet of the peach tissue paper. That will be something. And uh, you know what? I think we have some green here that will work as well. No right answer. Do uh, whatever makes you happy. But I like to get my pieces ready to go lined up like that. So yeah, we'll have kind of green and green. No, you know what? Actually, let's do something. I'm gonna change my mind because I can. Let's do something a little bit brighter since we have a green core. Let's kind of go from a lighter orange, that's what that peach is, to a, a deeper orange. So once again, I'm going to start down here at the bottom and just drop a, a line of glue in here so I can get my core adhered in place. And then let's just start rolling that up. Okay. This one's a little bit looser than the, uh, the previous one and that is just fine. Let's get some glue at the top of our tissue paper and let's marry these two pieces of tissue paper together like that. Beautiful. And Yeah, this is definitely going to have a different look and feel than the uh, the previous piece and that's going to be okay. That's going to be okay as long as we're close. Okay, and uh, yes, we have another cigar. So a couple of them are running here. Now, I'm going to go and uh, I've got a bunch to make. Um, not sure exactly how many I'm going to end up with for the size of the piece that we're working. My guess here is I'm going to need at least 20 of them. All right. So this is one of those projects, again, where you kind of just get your groove on and listen to your favorite audio book or music or whatever it is while you're doing this and just go to town and start mixing some things up. So let me uh, let me speed through a few of these and we'll uh, we'll get to where we need to get to. Several months later. All right, welcome back. Now, uh, during, uh, during my hiatus, I was able to create about 20 of our different uh, bead logs, or whatever we call them, but uh, here they are. And I think that's gonna fit into uh, the box that I've uh, put together here, which is uh, right here. Uh, it's, it's still drying a little bit, mostly uh, dry. One of the things that occurred to me when I was looking at this is that if I were to take these and basically figure out how long my beads need to be in order to fit in here, they're, I'm gonna to have to have a lot more cut off, right? They're gonna to have to be a lot longer than I really want. At the end of the day, I don't really care how much is below the surface. I'm really only looking at the surface. So it occurs to me that this is probably about two inches deep, I think, the box that I purchased. And I only really wanna show maybe about an inch worth of bead. So I said, well, what am I gonna do about this? And then it occurred to me, you know what? My good friend, uh, yeah. Foam core, <laughs> foam core to the rescue. And what this allowed me to do is I just created some uh, some shapes, the basic size of the bottom of my box here. And now I can just slide them in and just push them down. And in doing so, it just gives me an opportunity to create in essence a spacer so that when I go to put my beads in, they don't have to be as deep, all right? And so now instead of going two inches, my beads can be roughly an inch and work out just this is, what this is what happens when you try to do things on camera, too, is that every so often you're like, hey, let's rush it a little faster than we should. But uh, we'll let this dry, hopefully, in the next little bit. It's almost there, almost there. And in the interim, let's talk about how we're going to approach these, uh, these different logs, if you will, and make them into something. So each one of these is roughly, I don't know, I'd say just shy of a foot in length. And by the way, I have this uh, easy peasy um, measuring in front of me here, so just about 10 inches each one of these comes out to be, which is fine for what I'm doing. What I'm thinking is I wanna go through and I wanna chunk it down into roughly one inch sized beads. And I'm gonna, again, use my trusty rotary cutter here. And uh, it's always nice to do this with a sharp new blade. And by the way, if you are interested, uh, I'll, I'll link this uh, either down below or at the end of this video, I have a, a video on how to change the blade in your rotary cutter. Not, not crazy hard, but sometimes it can be a little confusing. So I'm gonna simply come here and working with the grid that I have on my cutting board, I'm gonna say, you know what, let me cut this end here. All right, that'll be one. And then about an inch over here, let's create that. All right, and so in doing so, I've created my first bead, and this is gonna allow me to then say, okay, now if I were to take this bead and put it into the box, what is it gonna look like, right? So it's just a little bit below the surface, which is perfect for what I want to be able to do. Let me just come in here and again, let's go and grab roughly an inch. And if they're not all exactly the same length, even better. It's going to give us a little bit of, of abstraction and relief. But 
come in here. You can also use the utility knife if you don't have a rotary cutter. So, you know, it's a bit of a workout either way because there's quite a few layers that we need to cut through. But I find the rotary cutter makes really quick uh, action here. And of course, I'll have a link for the, the Fiskars brand rotary cutter in the, uh, in the description below. All right. And then I have a tail here. Do I have enough off the end of the tail? Maybe. Maybe I can get one more. We'll see. And then I say, all right, so if I were to take these, and uh, again, I got some wetness in here. I might wait a little bit on this. But uh, say, okay, if we group these all together. There's another one and some more. And please be careful. You know, I, I know that <laughs> you probably have this down. But I tell you, when you're working with a round blade on a round object, the opportunity for it to slip and go toward your fingers is a little, a little too real. I've been very fortunate that uh, this guy has never drawn blood, but it doesn't mean it hasn't tried. So there we go. All right. So we get as much as we can out of that. And here we have a, a group of orange that we can uh, work with here. And I'm going to keep going through these, and I'm just going to create a number of beads. And uh, again, I'm kind of partially waiting for this to, to dry here. Hopefully in the next few moments, it won't be a big problem. And then uh, I'll show you how to drop the beads in. Kind of how to figure out what the look and feel is going to be. All right, let's see if I can start layering some things in without getting paint all over myself. Okay, so I might come in here and I say, you know what, let's, let's drop this piece in here like this. And I'm going to kind of just stack these guys like this. This will be kind of our established corner here. And we're going to really rely upon these things being crowded together as kind of the glue to hold them in place, if that makes sense. We're going to just jam them in here. And so we have a lot of them. And that's going to help to pull everything together. Let's get the uh, this pink in here. I'm going to kind of go across the bottom a little bit here. Again, hopefully you can see exactly what's going on in here. Nice. Let's get this green in this corner over here. Okay. And uh, a few of these yellow ones are kind of unraveling, but again, that gives us some additional textures to kind of add into the mix. Looks like I might have enough. Maybe I need to cut up one or two more. We'll find out. And that's one of the things I will do here is just start putting these into place and get a sense of how well they're going to fit. And uh, still, we want this, these are going to end up being in here pretty tight. So once we have all of the pieces in, we'll get a sense of how well this is working out for us. Pretty close, pretty close. I think we are going to need to cut up one more just to... Uh, just to kind of, like I said, we really want to wedge these in there. Keep sliding them in until I can't fit any more in. That's kind of what we're doing here. And again, you see with the, the reason for the spacers at the bottom is just we, you know, we'd only have half if we, you know, if these reach two inches long, we would only have half the ones we really needed to fill this thing up. And since we only need the top surface. By the way, I'm going to kind of just drop these in in various places, just kind of mix it up a little bit, although... I'm not sure how much that mixed up right there, but we'll break up some of these other chunks of color just to keep it interesting. Keep your eyes looking for something, right? You like see here, putting that in the center of that cluster of, of other, everything else is, that's the same really draws your eye to it. Now I come in here and, uh, and adjust it a little bit, just kind of just wiggle it with my, my thumbs and, and make it happen. But what we're going to end up with, of course, is going to be based upon the color combinations that we pull together. And so depending upon what color tissue paper you have, what color Sculpey or uh, polymer clay you're working with, um, is going to make a big difference, obviously, as to the outcome. But what I wanted to be able to show you today is exactly what we ended up with here, which is something that's kind of fun. Uh, I'm going to call this uh, butterfly eye because I think it kind of looks like that. What do you think? Kind of a, an interesting concept. But again, this is just a small piece of artwork that you could easily put a hanger on the back of this and hang it on the wall. Or it's the kind of thing that might sit on a mantelpiece, depending on what it is. And uh, there's nothing to prevent you, by the way, from uh, doing something interesting by combining a few of them. So if you want to come in here and, and say, let me uh, glue these two boxes side by side and create something like that, 
and do the same thing with the other monitor. Maybe it's a different color. Who knows? Anyway, your imagination is really the only limitation here. But again, with, with just a couple simple materials, some polymer clay and some tissue paper and a box, right? Okay, a little bit of glue, a little bit of glue. You can create something that is incredibly unique, uh, hopefully a conversation starter, something that looks good in your home, something you can sell to somebody else, whatever works for you, all right? All right? So, hey, I hope you had a good time today. And again, we do this every week, so we'd love to have you stop on by. Feel free to subscribe. But that's all I have for you today. Thank you so much for coming by. This is Spider, and I'll see you next time.